Uh, good morning, kia ora. Um, the tripartite title of my paper um, is not a collection of nouns, but begins with the imperative verb, design. Design histories, cultures and creative city futures. What I'm proposing is a triple helix of sorts, because I don't like binaries, three is a magic number, and generally allows for a collective fourth scenario to emerge. It also aligns with the three stages of participatory design expressed by Spinozzi as discovery, exploration and prototyping. So let us activate these verbs to discover, explore and prototype new ways of developing and visualising design in New Zealand. In 2008, I set out to discover a national narrative of design in New Zealand uh, by embarking on a short south to north museum and gallery road trip. Adopting the broadest uh, term possible, I asked curators what New Zealand design they had in their collections. After a couple of abortive visits, it became clear that design equated to applied arts and occasionally products. The first two orders of Buchanan's four orders of design. However, until I verbally refined my search, design did not include plans and drawings, archive process work and company business archives, or even applied science and engineering. Fortunately, my project was overtaken by Michael Smythe's uh, New Zealand by Design, which provided a broad-ranging overview of New Zealand design history. This landscape uh, survey uh, provides an excellent starting point for students of New Zealand design and allows for more in-depth portraits of New Zealand's design history. In my abstract, I alluded to two notable examples of New Zealand design history, which deserve further critical attention because they were sustained attempts to establish a design culture in New Zealand. The first was the role of international industrial exhibitions from 1865, uh, primarily in Dunedin, New Zealand, um, New Zealand's first city and commercial capital. These followed a pattern established internationally, moving from a focus on raw materials and mineral extraction to international comparison of technological developments and developing a national design identity, along with spurring the establishment of museums and design education in this country. However, in the case of Dunedin at least, they differed from overseas models in two key respects. One, far from conforming to Greenhouse ephemeral vistas, they left a tangible prospective legacy in the cityscape in Dunedin. Second, their focus moved rapidly from tangible production based on extractive industries to intangible tourist experiences, the development of applied sciences, and the centrality of sports and leisure in New Zealand culture. The 1865 exhibition's now dystopian view of central Otago as the golden Vulcan of the South, um, a vast Manchester of mines and belching factories, was replaced, and that's uh, the first exhibition at the left there, was replaced within 25 years by a vision of New Zealand as a tourist mecca, the Switzerland of the South Seas, and a scenic wonderland which anticipated the establishment of the first National Tourist Department in New Zealand in 1901, and even today's Pure New Zealand brand. The second aspect of urban design saw the reclamation of the harbour to create Dunedin's Harbourside Warehouse District in 1889. And in 1925, the reclamation of Lake Logan to provide for a hilly city, one of the largest and most diverse sports facilities in New Zealand. The industrial exhibitions then can be said to have been a platform for Dunedin's Covered Stadium and Otago Polytechnic Centre for Adventure Sports in the former and adaptively reused 1925 New Zealand and South Seas Art Gallery. Altogether a more sustainable prospect than large-scale mineral extraction. Similarly, the establishment... Um, that is uh, the former art gallery from the 1925 exhibition as it is today. Um, establishment of the Design Act and the New Zealand Industrial Design Council took a far-reaching and activist project to strengthen design culture in New Zealand between 1967 and 1984. As Christopher Thompson has astutely pointed out, um, the omission of any reference to the existence of let alone the lessons learned from this experience by the Design Task Force in 2002-03, speaks of a critical unwillingness to acknowledge our design history. But recent national and transnational 
um, efforts such as the National Grid and Antipodes show more promise of a robust discourse and a more critical design culture. So, let us explore our design culture, that is the interrelationship uh, between designer, production and consumption against a background of global and economic, um, economic trade as set out in Guy Julia's book, The Culture of Design. But I will use as my unit of analysis the city of Dunedin, which, while no longer a commercial or design capital, sustains a healthy and diverse creative culture, most notably in music and fashion design. I use an historical model derived from Nadia and O'Day's media ecologies by a former honours student, Sean O'Gorman, and applied to the creative ecology of independent music and design. As both a talented singer and designer, Sean was interested to explore the different creative ecologies of the independent music labels flying down an expressway that were loosely linked under the term Dunedin Sound. Sean was interested how the Dean Sound scene was seen, represented and visually communicated through posters and album art, as well as the differing approaches and co-evolution of the keystone species of Flying Nun and the Glocal and Ephemeral Expressway. Her fourth year dissertation was presented at a conference in Melbourne and published in Proceedings before appearing in a collective book of essays entitled The Design Collective and Approach to Practice. During its publication gestation, Sean moved from creative um, directions assistant with the, uh, the newly formed Auckland Super City to assistant creative director at Dr. Martin's Boots. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Martin's Boots in London, where she collaborated with a punk historian on a short documentary of the company and in the advertising campaign Standing for Something. The fit between her interdisciplinary theory and practice makes the trajectory appear seamless, but her local and regional inquiry was at the time a much more grounded and personal exploration, immersion and articulation of structural and process thinking at the intersection of her twin passions of music and design. What emerged in this creative matrix of theory and practice, music and design, was an articulate, human-centred and future-focused design leader. This was recognised by Cumulus um, and Octagono magazine in 2013 when she was named as a European design talent and by her simultaneous appointment as creative director of the London Contemporary Voices. Applying Shan's inclusive creative ecologies model to Dunedin and zooming out a little, the importance of diversity for sustaining a creative culture becomes apparent. Alongside music, fashion and literature, and a number of experienced design-led companies such as AD Instruments, Animation Research, Timely, Mixbit and Reframe Media are emerging as part of a dynamic creative culture supported both by the city through the um, actions of the Transforming Dunedin Group, the Council's new arts and culture strategy, Aratoi Otapoti, the award of Gigatown and the UNESCO Creative City of, uh, status alongside a talented pool of graduates from the city's university and polytechnic. As Tony Fry stated um, in his important book, Design Futuring, um, Sustainability, Ethics and New Practice, looking back um, teaches a way to formulate key questions and to create critical fictions, enabling the contemplation of what would otherwise not be considered. Guy Ryan similarly combined his passion for film, science, communication and design to establish the Inspiring Stories Trust, a future-focused sustainable design initiative that humbly seeks a youth-led world change. Strengthening the trend is Wellington-based McGuinness Institute, um, that uh, counters political cycle blindness with an inclusive and sustaining strategic long view, blending research and practice. Another city, Christchurch, uh, has recently and surprisingly to some led the way in creative regeneration and what a recent documentary called The Art of Healing after its disastrous 2011 earthquake. In many ways, um, it fulfilled um, all six features of Landry's creative city in the absence of, or in the face of, the forced removal of urban design. 
A conscious, popular and willful display of creative resilience uh, reclaimed Ground Zero as a stage for creative participation and prototyping of a new city. Um, Landry's theory and various local practices have been embedded at the, on the international stage through the 2004 establishment of the seven um, themes of the UNESCO Creative City Network. In December 2014, uh, Dunedin joined that network as a UNESCO Creative City of Literature. The UCCN framework is a participatory and strategic response to the challenges and issues facing a rapidly urbanised planet and globalised economy. It seeks to make room for future shans and, and um, global creative expressways. Dunedin's UNESCO Creative City recognition is not an end point or an award ceremony, but an international system and the beginning of a catalytic creative framework for the city and nation. Connecting and cross-pollinating various creative endeavours. Um, one Dunedin recent initiative of note was both celebratory and mildly subversive. Poetic used the platform of the Vogel Street Party, a community trust-led initiative um, celebration of the revitalisation of Dunedin's warehouse precinct that attracted over 10,000 people in October this year, to transform the parking experience from a vehicular ritual to a pedestrianised provision of poems from Dunedin and other creative, uh, UNESCO creative cities. Appropriately, this involved the adaptive reuse of obsolete parking machines by a team of designers and computer programmers to provide an inclusive um, and innovative technological platform for creative writing. Um, similarly, students at Christchurch Festival of Transitional Architecture um, repurposed the prosaic road cone, an ubiquitous road cone, into um, a domes that Buckminster Fuller would appreciate. While the remarkable Gap Fuller Collective um, uh, continues to surprise and delight Canterbury's Plains in its own idiosyncratic fairway to heaven. <coughs> um, golf, with its existential pointlessness, is probably an inappropriate metaphor to conclude with. Um, so, in acknowledgement of the common ground um, of public space, I will return to the central metaphor of this conference. Um, the scientific discovery of the DNA double helix and the involvement of two New Zealanders in a collaborative and speculative visualisation of the building blocks of life. Um, as an aside to the scientific paradigm, I will counter-propose the question of who actually designed or drew out um, the double helix. Um, as it was not one of the Nobel Prize winners, I will substitute and adapt um, Farina uh, and Ferreira's triple helix model as it provides a broader overlapping model linking research, government and industry to people, planet and trade. Um, having cursorily examined New Zealand's design histories and cultures and strategies, a sustainable future will require the co- and multivalency of craft, profession and discipline, the public and private sectors and civil society art, science and business through a more engaged and engaging design history, cultural discourse and theory informed practice. These elements are essential to developing a creative and resilient, what Guy Bonsier might have called design pilots uh, for our cities and for our nation and for what Buckminster Fuller called Spaceship Earth. Thank you.